Kamala and Monica and the Marvel logo. Ooh. Enter Kamala Khan. And getting some Mitchells vs. the Machine style self-referential intro vibes. <laughs> Why are hands so hard to draw? To prevent the AI uprising, obviously. It's the only thing we still have over them. Now that Kamala is a bigger part of the MCU, let's get these stats for every character she meets. Please and thank you. Also, Nihati is amazing. Great taste, Kamala. What's your name? Miss Marvel? Dude. Twinsies. Sets up how much of a fangirl she is and makes her relatable because this is how I assume it will go when I finally meet Grimes. Real ones, no. And whom amongst us hasn't also dreamt about being carried off to a party cradled by Brie Larson? Whomst? Oh, only if you learn to glow like your Auntie Carol. <laughs> she does. Wait, was, was that a winning Captain Marvel? Just chick. Okay, I, I, good, I just did a bunch of puns about her superhero names. <laughs> so much better. We're good. Tie-dye Crocs? Hell yes. And he up on that shot, walking upside down and then just floating out into space. Gorgeous. Come on, Goose just along for the ride on her shoulder? And then he's just chilling with her on this low atmosphere planet? Honestly, the Marvel's powers seem to be just whatever. Light, energy, and it's totally fine because this is dope. I mean, don't touch it, but I get it. <laughs> Kamala has certainly seen some stuff, but unwillingly being transported to just floating in space is ultimate terror stuff. <laughs> Abject terror or not, fangirl's gonna fangirl. And this is the mid credit stinger from Miss Marvel. Watch it, it's fun. But the posters have been updated to be even more parasocially awkward. But also, this is like a vision board and it worked? Um, hi. I like the living room. Compliments, but more importantly, the cons! Kamal's family is one of the best parts of Miss Marvel, and I am stoked they are in this film as much as they are. <laughs> yep. Your friend, Captain Marvel, she was walking up and down our living room. And now you come back, no apology. Is Captain Marvel pressuring you in any way? Just because one of the most powerful superheroes in the galaxy walked down the stairs doesn't mean you're not in trouble. Mrs. Khan wanting an apology is amazing, and Mr. Khan making sure Kamala isn't being pressured into anything by Captain Marvel is just... <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Kamala is hearing Peanuts adults because her dreams are coming true. Tom Holland might have set the standard for portraying a super teen in the MCU, but Iman Vellani is perfecting it. Oh, is happening. I'm sure there's something extremely impractical about wavy concrete structures built into the side of mountains, but dang it if I'm not always jealous of them. I would hate for your people to suffocate when I strip the atmosphere. Uh, w would like a vacuum? I know it's another technically simple technique. The focus puller just keeps the lens focused on her mark rather than staying with her, but the effect is super fun to look at and it plays into the sneaking around vibe. Oh my god! <laughs> Appropriate reaction. And then this freaking cat anime! And a slow dolly zoom. I mean, personally, I've always thought this one should be called the dolly pull since the dolly is pulled away from the subject and the lens is zoomed in, whereas the classic is the opposite, but it's sick either way. Mrs. Khan jumping on her husband to protect him is some real, real love stuff. And I'm all about it. Badass good wife. We're often told how strong superheroes are, and then we don't always get to see it. So I always appreciate when they do show it and somebody gets punched through a house. Never change, Kamala. Oh, she figured it out. Clever girl. Eh, she's still not exactly clear on the rules. Less clever girl. Miss Marvel comic fans and, you know, her creators have understandably criticized how the MCU was portrayed and even changed Kamala's powers. I totally get it. And they're right. That said, Kamala's kicky moves are awesome. If it wasn't already clear, this fight set piece is amazing. It's a super fun idea executed with surprisingly clear geography and plotting considering how much everything is always changing. It's a really great device to show us all three main characters' powers. Carol is hella strong, Monica is effectively invincible if she times her phasing right, and Kamala is quick with kind of Green Lantern-y powers and a mix of the other two without being at the exact level of either. Also, the Skrillex needle drop is pretty much perfect. <laughs> Yo, saving your besties niece or whatever. Goose continues to live up to his name as the greatest wingman. It's clearly the name, I don't make the rules. Although, as a person who has done some DIY home stuff, all I could think about was the damage to the poor Khan's house. We're looking for Kamala Khan. <laughs> Kamala's enthusiasm will never get old. Wait, if this is all top secret information, why is it on a clear case? Uh, that's a, that's a good question. An interesting choice to have Saber know about the Red Daggers, but Kareem, the Red Dagger, isn't on the list of allies? Hey, what does um, Saber stand for? Uh, strategic Aerospace Biophysics and Exolinguistic Response. That's classified. Sorry. The editing and bass with the witty banter is just such a solid combo. What's your code name? Oh, I don't have a code name. <laughs> we'll workshop it. No, thank you. Why do you have intel on her? Is there some sort of surveillance on us? Surveillance is a strong word. It sure is. A totally correct one, but strong nonetheless. Some would even call it Patreon. 
Captain Marvel can absorb light energy. And you, you can turn light into physical matter. And then power confirmations with a little sneaky exposition. They don't seem related. Whatever you say, families are complicated. Mrs. Khan out here dropping knowledge. Mala, when did you get powers? I walked through a radiation shielding barrier of a witch hex and now I can manipulate and see all wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. I mean, when you say it like that, it sounds kind of silly and not like part of an expertly crafted emotional gut punch of a show about lost trauma and grief. Also, one of the best Disney Plus shows to come out. Everything great about WandaVision available now on YouTube and Nebula. <laughs> Kamala's terrified scream is the same every time. This time it's just very far away. Hey, black girl magic! <laughs> Love that that's what worked. This is the stuff we need more of because it would happen constantly, especially with people still figuring out their powers. Also very good that she did because she would have splatted her. Oh, it's cool, it's Carol. Samuel L. Jackson clearly had fun making this because I am having a great time watching him. Hold that thought. This sequence is a great example of what makes this movie so watchable. The pacing is great and there's several emotional turns ending on Carol shrugging off Kamala's adoration, all in like 15 seconds. Love a creepy lip lick. In, mo in movies, strictly in movies. I can't fly. Do you guys have a spaceship I could borrow? Or... Kamala, don't talk to them. <gasps> you know my name. My friend, she knows my other friend's name. They're meeting and it's great. Skybeam, it's the only fitting MCU punishment. Can't even blame her. I mean, that, that looks like a vacuum, so where's the robot made? <laughs> and that was some subtle brutality, because the implication is that Kamala's bridge collapsed on the switch, and those people didn't make it, even though we aren't shown what happens. No, how could Kamala now? Here? We need to save who we can. The drip. These looks that define these characters. Kamala is still awestruck to be in Captain Marvel's presence, and Carol is still a reluctant hero. Holla! I'm so sorry. I'm a dad and sometimes terrible jokes appear in my mouth. Truly, it's like a dad curse. You can't stop it and it's because two to ten year olds freaking love them. I'm really sorry for the way I spoke to you. Adults apologizing to kids? What's next? Captain Marvel taking responsibility for how her actions negatively affected the Kree? Get it? Because she, she does that at the end. Apology win. But when I'm fighting crime on the streets of Jersey City, I go by Miss Marvel and I hope that's okay. I have realized I should have asked permission, so twinsies. I love that the film actually addresses the weirdness of a super fan becoming a superhero. So real and so awkward. The Marvels. Ding! With the energy from her space hammer thingy. It's called the Universal Weapon. Oh, really? I was gonna call it Cosmo Rod. Having a quippy teen in your movie can be a real gamble, but dang it, did we all hit the jackpot with Iman Vellani. She had star charts and maps on the screens on her ship. To where? To the stars? Okay. Hugging from the mouth of er, the arms of babes. Sometimes it's the kids who know it's needed. Like fracking. The more holes you drill, the more destabilized the shell becomes, and then earthquake. Based Monica. You've been there. Uh, uh, yeah. She said that really weird. Yeah, why are you being weird? Your besties always know. Kamala being her newest bestie, obviously. Nicholas has told me how dangerous they can be. <laughs> Mrs. Khan referring to Nick Fury as Nicholas automatically gets two wins. I don't, I don't make the rules. By the way, Amir gets a beautiful beard win. There's just weirdly beautiful but kind of terrifying woman using the other one to hurt people. And women supporting women, even when they're baddies. Love to see it. If anything happens to you, Maelski John Lelungi, you tell her that. Wait, what did she just say? <laughs> I believe it. Spectrum, spectrum vision. Vision! Oh, wait, no. Sorry. <laughs> Again, realistic dialogue. Also, so close to getting it right. The Beastie Boys are always a win, and a training montage set to my middle school anthem, Intergalactic, is the fastest way to see a slightly more lighthearted side of Carol. <laughs> and I genuinely believe they're having fun. How old are you? 306. Uh, wow, same age. Kamala's brother coming in with a solid zinger, and just realizing Kamala's dad has a beautiful beard as well. By the way, Jude and I just went on the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind ride last week. That's why there was no video, and I think we can say we now know what it feels like to go through a jump point. Maybe more like these people's experience? Side note, I think it was his first true experience of, this is terrible, I love it. I think I just want to live somewhere where space travel is the norm? Maybe that's it. Also a culture that really reveres jellyfish, I guess. We are friends. Mm hmm It's a long story. I need to say it. Maybe not. And you cannot beat the big sister, little sister energy they have. Their language is song. Most of them won't understand you unless you sing. Damn. Incredible concept. And I know we'll never get all the answers I want, but singing is their language. So is dance kind of like sign language? And there's music playing at the party. So is that like having talk radio on really loud for us? Just a little Casey Kasem blasting at the house party, but like no countdown, just him talking. These are the things that keep me up at night. Two new faces. One could be more cheerful. Wow, even the sing-song culture shames women for not smiling tight. One could be more shut the hell up. Dang. 
Yeah, legal convenience. Uh huh, sure, Marv. Fun idea to have the dress be based on her superhero costume. Carol slash Brie doesn't really miss when it comes to a good dress, though. I'm feeling so many feelings right now. Same, Kamala, same. I know it would make no sense, but goodness, I wish Carol just busted into Black Sheep right here. Give me a chance here before it gets so messy. The internet claims Carol now meets the criteria for a Disney princess, and I fully support it. Envy Adams had already done that in my book, but Brie Larson's voice is angelic. How many chapters of your Captain Marvel fan fiction is this giving you? So many. Monica, I didn't know you were an AO3 fan. Good for you. He doesn't have to sing? Yeah, he's bilingual. Hear me out. A solo rocket movie where he gets stuck on Aladna. A Star is Born meets The Hangover. At best, a one-off pest problem. At worst, some kind of infestation bioweapon. Either way, gross. These, these are too much, right? Definitely. No. Solid team shot. Also, great touch to let Monica decide to ditch her comic accurate wing thingies, but still give us the moment. Loving the way the Aladdinians affect the score like this. Heroes, microbots, right? The ships? Margo's almost three and hyperfixated on Big Hero 6 right now, so maybe that's it. Even though we got the montage of them perfecting the switching, it still wasn't in a combat situation, and there are gonna be mistakes. <laughs> Dang, Cosmo Rod is strong. Let's attack me in. One, two. And they learned go on three, not on go. Where did you get that? My grandma. She sent it to me in the mail. <laughs> Love her honesty. Look, don't steal people's oceans. Not cool, but I think the water planet could spare a little. Who knows, could fix that whole time dilation thing and Seneca Crane could survive. Carol, get down here! Hold that thought. I'm honestly good with this being her new catchphrase. Good on Kamala for trusting her gut and saving them all. Is that why you never came back? I thought if I fixed it, then I could come home. Definitely puts Captain Marvel's absence for a lot of the events on Earth in perspective, and I 100% believe it. Our brains are really stupid sometimes. Even if we know we'd tell someone we love that what they're doing is crazy, it can still seem like the right move to us for us. I did not give you a lot of space to be a real person. Gosh, there are lines in this movie that needed to be said throughout the entire MCU to different characters, and I love that we're getting them now. Disgusting and adorable. Discorable. I can't. Can you? I got it. It's great when you just don't have the energy for the nonsense getting thrown your way and your coworkers cover for you. Spit him out. Spit him out. No, 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 <laughs> She's so gentle about it. So we're literally hurting guts? What an absolutely incredible scene. I feel like the writers had to be blown away when this got approved. And this extra touch of playing memory from Les Mis? <laughs> Amazing. Come here, kitty. Get this woman another Oscar. <laughs> the hunting. Right. I must wait for the sunrise. And the horror movie reveal. <laughs> I'm sorry. Aw, she really is, but the betrayal on his face is hilarious. Don't worry, I was joking. I know the song is from Phantom. I appreciate that they knew exactly what we wanted to see and gave it to us. Cats in zero G. Also, Bab's version is still clearly the best. No offense, Jennifer Hudson, your Grizabella was still really great in Rocky Horror. I'm insufferable. Come back safely, Rita. You better. I don't want to be an only child. Not again. Not with these two. I know I talked about the Khan parents being great, but I love the sibling relationship between Kamala and her brother Amir. He's funny and supportive and brothers, am I right? Are you praying? Don't stop! We need all the help we can get! Fury's always been a pragmatist. You're forgetting something. What? Me. A plus action movie set up in knockdown line, straight out of the 90s. Perfect, no notes. <laughs> Teamwork! and genuinely inventive fight choreography while they all switch places in the motion control cameras and steady cam. It's so clean and fluid and gorgeous. And Monica with a sick Cosmo Rod toss, also brutal. You're living up to your name again. Ah, <sighs> villains do love gaslighting. I know it's murky because a byproduct of Carol destroying the Supreme Intelligence was Hala falling apart, but that was unintentional. Darben has intentionally destroyed two worlds and is trying to destroy a third, but sure, Carol's the annihilator. <laughs> Ah, power lust do be like that sometimes. Come up and sorry, you try to crush a kid's head with a hammer, you get cosmically blown up. I did make that rule. Her powers are definitely different, but sometimes we get glimpses of what we expected. But what about the switching? Her um, powers aren't entangled anymore. Oh. That slight bummed O. Oh. Sometimes it's nice to be forced to have friends. Never opposed to a good comic panel style edit. And I am a fan of OP Monica. I always knew I would have to stay. Self-sacrifice. Oof, brutal but stunning shot. I know we all know Captain Marvel is pretty powerful, and her battles with Darben made it seem like she wasn't as powerful as we remember because the bangle absorbed her powers, but then moments like this are a good reminder of just how powerful she is. Eh, 
Probably not a bad idea to keep the Bengals separated for now. And now she and Carol are for real twinsies. Did you think you were the only kid superhero in the world? Ah, a tight callback. I guess I'll go watch the Hawkeye show now. Where did you get that? I found it on my couch. Seriously, never change, Kamala. Please? Politeness! Monica gets a second chance to wake up this time and her mom isn't gone, even if she doesn't know her at all. What happened? We were hoping you could tell us. Nicholas Holt aged poorly? JK, JK, I know Stinky Pete is the OG. Hey, this movie is good. Like, better than a few mid-tier MCU movies? I really liked it. The writing and performances are solid. These are three very different characters who don't get stuck in their stereotypes over the course of the movie, and the dynamic between them is one of the best we've gotten in the MCU. I'm saying this all hesitantly because I feel like people didn't like it, but I barely followed the press around this movie, not because I wasn't interested, but because it just wasn't on any of my feeds. Then it would be easy to blame Marvel for not spending enough on targeted marketing, so we'll do that. No, I don't know. A lot of us do have superhero fatigue, and this movie, in theory, required two separate Disney Plus shows to even know that two of the main characters existed, one with her current form and actor, and another Disney Plus show to be caught up with Fury. That's not a post-Endgame strategy. I can't say for sure if it would have been a good pre-Endgame strategy. I think they would have had a better shot at it then. But Miss Marvel had a mid-credits cliffhanger that took a year and a half to pay off. And after Black Widow, which wasn't nearly as good as this, I admit, it's hard to not wonder why it seems like Disney is setting these movies up to fail. Not blowing any minds, but generally, after a character has died is not the best time for an origin story. The issues aren't as dire here, and I know COVID screwed everything up, but the timing is still off. And it's generally frustrating to see good movies like this getting their chance on the other side of the roller coaster. Granted, just as a Captain Marvel sequel, it had an uphill battle with a large portion of the MCU fans since they all decided she was too pretty or something? I can't remember. JK, I got Twitter threads or watch my first video. I'm not rehashing it. And the thing is, I like this story and I think it's totally engaging, but the chemistry between Brie, Tiana, and Iman would mostly make me not even care. Their chemistry takes no time to find its footing and by the end, I'm rooting for all three of them. I think Darben's arc could have been a little less mustache twirly or braid twirly. Cosmorod spinny? But even Zowie Ashton was able to create these moments of sympathy that we don't always get with Villains of the Week. I don't want to beat the unalive equine here, the movie isn't perfect, but mostly because Secret Invasion and Miss Marvel's plots seem to matter less than just the introduction of characters and setting. Aunt Carol and Lieutenant Trouble's family problems felt a tad melodramatic at first, but it wasn't a distraction, and they really nailed it home and made me believe it in the end. And that's because this movie is about these three ladies, and it excels at that. The banter, the quips, the looks, it all felt so natural, probably because these actors all seem to really like each other. I feel like I could watch these three go on a picnic and be glued to the screen. A trio can be hard, often two shine and one hangs in the back, but that was not the case here. They all brought their own thing to the party and each makes the movie better with their presence. I have a hard time seeing the Marvels 2 or Captain Marvel 3 being made this way, and maybe that's for the best, but the MCU is clearly trying to build something again and these three are a great place to start. Sorry, four. Goose, too. How oh, we got four Thor movies and no Goose the Flurkin film is just mind-boggling. Get it together, Feige. Next week, a movie with an actor whose name I may not say the entire video. We'll see. I mean, it's going to be a lovely house to raise a family in, you know. I mean, 